All right. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call the DeKalb City Council regular meeting of April 11, 2022, to order. Uh, can I have a motion, please? So, so moved. Move. Second. Awesome. Uh, I guess we are to order. I guess I didn't even have to do that, did I? You know the crowd? I've just got stage fright with all you guys here. I'm telling you. All right. Roll call. Uh, recording Secretary Scott, please. Morris. Morris. Here. Larson. Here. Smith. Here. Perkins. Here. McAdams. Here. Verbeck. Here. Favor. Here. Mayor Barnes. Here. Eight present. All right, the meeting is called to order. All right, uh, agenda item B, Pledge of Allegiance. I thought we would call up Acting Chief Thomas as maybe one of his last duties as Acting Chief <laughs> to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance tonight, please, Chief. Thank you, Acting Chief Thomas. All right, moving on to approval of the agenda. I would take a motion to modify the agenda to remove our executive session, which is the approval to hold an executive session in order to discuss the purchase or lease of real property as provided, fo provided for in 5 ILCS 120 2 C5 and pending litigation as provided for in 5 ILCS 120 2 C11. Can I get a motion to have that removed from the agenda? So moved. Second. Moved by uh, Alderman Smith, seconded by Alderman Perkins. Roll call. Morris. Morris. It's yes. It's recording Secretary Scott's reading the roll call. Thank you, recording Secretary. I'm sorry, Morris? Yes. Larson? Yes. Smith? Yes. Perkins? Yes. McAdams? Yes. Verbeck? Yes. Favor? Yes. Mayor Barnes? Yes. Eight aye. All right, so the executive session has been removed from the agenda. Now I would take a motion to approve the agenda as uh, modified. So moved. Second. Moved by Alderwoman Larson, seconded by Alderman McAdams. Roll call recording Secretary Scott, please. Larson? Yes. Smith? Yes. Perkins? Yes. McAdams? Yes. Verbeck? Yes. Favor? Yes. Morris? Yes. Mayor Barnes? Yes. Eight aye. All right, the modified agenda has been approved. All right, I've got a proclamation I want to read tonight. It's National Public Safety Telecommunications Week. So whereas emergencies can occur at any time that require police, fire, or emergency medical services, and whereas when an emergency occurs, the prompt dispatch of police officers, firefighters, and paramedics is critical to the protection of life, preservation of property, and public safety. And whereas the safety of our police officers, firefighters, and paramedics is dependent upon the quality and accuracy of information obtained by public safety telecommunicators of the City of DeKalb Emergency Communication Center. And whereas telecommunicators are the single vital communication link among our police officers, firefighters, and paramedics by monitoring their activities by radio, providing them information, and ensuring their safety. And whereas telecommunicators of the City of DeKalb have contributed substantially to effective public safety response, the apprehension of criminals, the suppression of fires, and the treatment of patients. And whereas each telecommunicator has exhibited compassion, understanding, and professionalism during the performance of their duties during the past year. And whereas, during the prolonged pandemic of COVID-19, our telecommunicators have once again been the first line of defense in sending help to those in need. And whereas, the week of April 10th through 16th, 2022, has been designated as National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week by the Association of Public Safety Communications Officials, APCO, and recognized nationally by the Proclamation of the United States Congress. Therefore, I, Cohen Barnes, Mayor of the City of DeKalb, Illinois, do hereby declare local recognition and celebration of National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week from April 10th through April 16th, 2022, in honor of the women and men whose diligence and professionalism help keep the City of DeKalb and its first responders informed of emergencies and safe from harm. Nice job, everyone. And I think with that, I have Sean Woya. If you want to come up and say a few words, uh, you can come up to the podium right there. That'd be fantastic. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and City Council for this uh, proclamation. The men and women of the 911 profession are a unique group of individuals with very particular set of skills. They work around the clock to be available whenever they are needed, missing holidays with family, sacrificing sleep to maintain their social identities, 
and taking the worst of the worst when it comes to calls for phone calls and radio traffic. The group of professionals that we have here at the city of DeKalb are the finest I've ever had the chance to work with, and I'm sure some of the best that the industry has to offer. There's no real way to measure their value to the city and to the citizenry, but here's a few numbers. In the last year, approximately 1.7 million pieces of radio traffic were handled. 20,457 911 calls and 69,891 non-emergency calls. And this was done with a minimum of two telecommunicators working around the clock. Comparatively, DeKalb County handled approximately 22.2 million pieces of radio traffic, 21,350 911 calls. Your telecommunicators here in the city do about three quarters of the radio work with 95% of the 911 calls and half of the staffing. My telecommunicators are some of the hardest working, intelligent, and kind people I've ever met. I cannot commend their efforts highly enough, and neither can anyone else. Thank you. What an awesome way to kick off the meeting. All right, moving on to uh, agenda item E, public participation, we have none. Moving on to agenda item F, appointments, we have none of those as well. Moving on to agenda item G, approval of the minutes, uh, we have none from the city clerk, so moving to minutes su submitted by the recording secretary. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes from our recording secretary? So moved. Second. Moved by Alderwoman Larson, seconded by Alderman Favor, roll call. Mayor, you'll need to read that and the title in its entirety. Oh, uh, so it'll be approval of the minutes of the regular city council meeting of March 28th, 2022. Thank you, sir. Roll Smith? Call. Yes. Perkins? Yes. McAdams? Yes. Verbic? Yes. Favor? Yes. Morris? Yes. Larson? Yes. Mayor Barnes? Yes. Eight I? All right, the minutes are approved. Moving on to agenda item H, the consent agenda. Number one, accounts payable and payroll through April 11, 2022 in the amount of $2,503,272.20. Can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Moved by Alderman Verbeck, seconded by Alderman Favor. Roll call, please. Perkins? Yes. McAdams? Yes. Verbeck? Yes. Favor? Yes. Morris? Yes. Larson? Yes. Smith? Yes. Mayor Barnes? Yes. Eight aye. All right, the consent agenda passes. Moving on to agenda item I, public hearings. We have none. So agenda item J, considerations. Number one, the appointment of acting fire chief Michael Thomas as full-time fire chief in the city of DeKalb. Can I have a motion to bring it to the floor? So moved. Second. Moved by Alderman Perkins, seconded by Alderwoman Morris, city manager. I'd like to approach the podium. If Absolutely. I I have no idea why there are so many people here tonight. <laughs> so I'll be brief. Uh, my background tells you a great story. Uh, as you recall, Mike Thomas has been serving as our acting fire chief since uh, former McMaster retired, former Chief McMaster retired at the end of November last year. And uh, over the past four and a half months, he certainly had an opportunity as acting chief to address uh, both from a technical standpoint in terms of relationships within the department, all the, some of the toughest challenges that come to a fire chief. Uh, and uh, the, the ramping up of our staffing, the, the uh, planning and designing, and, and then uh, votes on, on uh, the acquisition of some very large fire equipment, all of that has happened here in the last four and a half months. Uh, as you do know, and I, I put this in my background, uh, we had a search that began in early in the fall last year. And a search committee uh, consisting of a lot of community members uh, helped us with that. And I just want to say for the record, and I didn't put this in my background, who those people were. Kate Cardella, uh, local resident, uh, employee of the school district. Uh, Joe Shield Street, who uh, <coughs> was representing outside uh, fire interests and uh, is uh, the director of TRICOM. Uh, uh, Sean was uh, uh, recognized tonight on behalf of our telecommunicators, one of the biggest telecommunicating uh, consortiums in, in uh, Northern Illinois. Uh, Keisha Sherrod, Noel Millard, 
president of 1236, Chief Byrd, and uh, also Council Member Barb Larson. Uh, we worked together for a couple of months. We did a national search. Uh, the search turned up uh, a, a fair number of candidates, so we narrowed it down to two who went through a rigorous series of interviews. Uh, an offer was made to the top person. We could not reach agreement on that. Mike agreed to step up uh, just as the clock was striking uh, at the end of November and uh, I'm very grateful for that. So what has Mike accomplished in his career as a firefighter? Uh, Mike began in, in 1995 uh, with a much younger guy named Nicholas who was the city manager who um, somehow or other uh, 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 in working with uh, our fire and police commission and Sam Finch is here tonight. There's Sam, uh, our president of, of that uh, commission. Um, we got a guy named Mike Thomas on Mike has uh, touched all the bases. He's been uh, at every rank. Uh, first, uh, lieutenant firefighter, uh, param lieutenant paramedic, lieutenant firefighter, excuse me, captain, firefighter, EMT, um, battalion chief, uh, deputy chief, now acting chief. And uh, it's my pleasure tonight to tell you that uh, as city manager and within my authority as city manager, uh, I intend to appoint him with your blessing to full-time fire chief for the city of DeKalb. And unless I see heads wagging differently, um, we can consider it so. I've already uh, extended an, an offer, so <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's okay. <laughs> uh, so, congratulations. So uh, this is a kind of a new custom starting tonight. Uh, we did something modified like this with Chief Bird uh, about a year ago. Uh, but what I'd like to do is have uh, Mike go through the swearing in. And uh, if uh, Ruth would come forward and do that, please. And then uh, Mike's wife, Jill, will officially pin the, the badge on. and. Uh, Mike's daughter Taylor and fiance Eddie is, are here in the audience and maybe you'd like to join us for that. So, Ruth? Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Michael Thomas. I, Michael Thomas. Having been appointed to the position of fire chief, Having been appointed to the position of fire chief. In the city of DeKalb. In the city of DeKalb. County of DeKalb. County of DeKalb. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of fire chief. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of fire chief. In the DeKalb Fire Department in the DeKalb Fire Department. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. I'll do it, Chief. That's, <laughs> this is the next level. <laughs> Thank you all. Unlike Sean, I didn't prepare a terrific speech. So, uh, but I just wanted to say thank you to the city manager, the council, mayor. Uh, excuse me. 
Uh, to my wife and family for putting up with some pretty tough hours. And I'm a little overwhelmed because this is pretty crazy, the amount of support. Uh, and so I take very seriously the responsibility that you've bestowed upon me. I work very hard to make you proud of the fire department. And I will work very hard for the community as well. Uh, so, again, thank you for the support. Really appreciate this, and uh, let's get back to work. <laughs> All right, I know everyone here is uh, wanting to stay for the rest of the council agenda, and you're more than welcome to, but. <laughs> Uh, it would be no problem right now. We'll just pause a few minutes. If you want to go ahead and uh, leave, uh, that is no problem whatsoever. We don't mind a bit. Just give me two minutes, okay? <laughs> Take all the time you need. few more seconds. Big moment for them all. All right, so moving on to agenda item uh, considerations number two, consideration of the city's food truck licensing requirement. Um, can I get a motion to bring that to the floor? So moved. Second. Moved by Alderman McAdams, seconded by Alderman Favor. City Manager, what you got? Yeah, I think uh, we need to do a little rearranging. Uh, how we uh, deal with uh, food trucks. Uh, I, a little longer background here than maybe was necessary, but I wanted to give a little history to how long we've been working on this. Uh, we, we did a little house cleaning back in 2018, a couple of different sittings, to see how it would work out. Uh, I, I was very surprised to, to, to learn this, but uh, Ruth Scott provided me with some background on the number of uh, food truck licenses that have been issued in the last couple of years under the new setup and uh, for uh, even though we see literally dozens of them around the area uh, some many of them uh, you know working uh, from time to time in in uh, city of DeKalb so um, either people aren't paying attention to the regs uh, don't know they have to be regulated uh, are regulated of course by the county health department terms of the food and the very important sanitation matters um, or and or um, it, it's just uh, either it seems it's not the sheer dollars but the different levels of, of charges that we put against the food trucks and so I've, I've suggested to you and I realize this is just a consideration but uh, I've, I've given you a, a couple of uh, uh, what I think are, are streamlined um, bases for regulating at the city level at all uh, and and so here they are and the first one I think uh, has to remain the case that we uh, encourage interest any interested vendor who's got a truck or is thinking about doing it uh, to uh, begin their path to licensure with the County Health Department because they're the ones who have to see what's your setup going to be do you do you have uh, fair ways of handling food, uh, delivering the food, are there restrooms nearby? Obviously the food trucks don't carry the restrooms on the side uh, and all the rest of that. Uh, and so if the people can clear that, they come to us, we give them a one-stop shop. We basically say, here's what we expect. Uh, we, we're gonna give the fees to them in one payment. It covers, what does it cover? Uh, 
Uh, well, we're going to. We pr I propose removing the background investigation, and and I think you saw why I'm suggesting that. But just for the record, I can say that while it's a good idea in principle, it's it does uh, just doing it before a person gets a license doesn't do anything uh, for assuring that the people who will be running the trucks over the period of weeks and months are actually going through that same investigation. They might be a totally different crew of people, typically are. Um, and uh, so, uh, and, and we don't have people who go out and, and uh, bird dog the trucks uh, around the town. We just don't have that kind of staff and we wouldn't want to anyway. Uh, in addition, uh, there are some, just some common sense rules that people would have to know about that uh, by, by being privileged enough to have a license in the city of DeKalb for anything, uh, they need to be good to their neighbors and local businesses and res residents. Uh, uh, having some glaring noise, uh, strobe, uh, kind of annoying strobe lighting, uh, uh, anything that would be a distraction to, to drivers by, um, that uh, certainly they should be paying uh, sales taxes, uh, and so they should register for that, and that's the main, main thing I guess we would do to sign them up. So I'm, I'm suggesting that with, with this general uh, small package of things that we could proceed, I, I think we'd be assuring the public with the license from the county that uh, people will be getting uh, a nice sandwich or a, a nice something uh, and that uh, we take it seriously. Comments or questions, Council? Uh, Alderwoman Larson. Um, one's just kind of a frivolous one. Does this mean the ice cream trucks can't play their music when they're driving? I mean, well, we I moved thought, to town and my thing. husband was like, that's, oh my God, the ice cream <laughs> Yeah, well, that's, Cause that's not, a little different kind of vehicle. Mm -hmm. It is a food dispensing vehicle. Oh, okay. Uh, and they're allowed to play well, music. Uh, it's up to you. It's up, totally up to you. <laughs> if, that was, uh, and, okay. That, that was it's a, the that same was three a, songs, but, but it kind of <laughs> inspires us, sure. Yeah. I mean, you know. It's universal, I, though. Yeah. It is. It's, it's, you know. But, and then. When you wish upon a star, what are the other two? Like? <laughs> and then you, for the one shop, or your one stop shopping, um, the fees, because when I was reading some of the background information, some of the fees seemed like it was a little they pricier. Were, or, they were laddered, and, yeah. and since the. The health department has two levels of fee, one, one if you're actually preparing the food, mm -hmm. serving prepared, or, or prepackaged food. So say you pay 280 to the, to the county and then you come in and uh, I mean the level is, is for you to uh, direct, but um, we're just interested in some kind of a token and 50 bucks, whatever, just so they get in the door, they pay it, they sign the, uh, we, we check things out, they, mm -hmm. they sign the uh, application, we review it, and, and we're done. And basically it's just That's an it. annual fee. Annual fee. Okay. Annual fee. Yeah. And then sales tax. Yeah. Rather okay. than like every month and renew, and then that's how it used sure. to be. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Alderwoman uh, Morris. I too was worried about not having ice cream truck music. Um, that definitely came to my mind too. I was like, we can't, we can't outlaw ice cream truck music. Like it's classic. Uh, so I just want to make sure we're clear on that. Not getting rid of ice cream truck music. Otherwise, yes, obnoxious sounds are fine to get rid of. Um, I think that's it. But thank you for bringing this to us uh, and streamlining a process and making it easier for people to do business. Thank you. By the way, the, the, we were prompted because this is a time of year when uh, vendors are looking to, to do this, and plus we had uh, a number of licenses that were expiring. Alderman Smith? Bill, what about our local establishments? I mean, are we, we going to extend the fee to them as well? Um, I, don't, I think I'm only one or maybe two have food trucks. Um, oh. Do we just extend it because of their current license, or we just? Well, uh, I thought that was in there before. I, yeah, I don't like, know you know, if like if they're a restaurant, and they want to have a little something on the. Yeah. Uh, well, the the county would still have to look at it because it right. might not be right there by the restaurant, and might be you know down right. or in another town, and then um, uh, still, I mean, the same. I'm trying to strip it down to the yeah. to the minimum, so I guess. Uh, it's not so important what the fee is. It's it's important that they they show us what they're going to do. 
I'm just out of curiosity, there was a, just going through it, do the same things apply for restaurant owners? Like there was, um, you know, the chief decides on prior offenses being a barrier, no specific look back period on that. Um, the sex offender status, I'm not advocating for eliminating that. I'm just kind of curious, mm -hmm. like it's a food truck, do the same rules apply for people that own restaurants? Or is there a reason why we're specifically why that was uh, for specific Yeah, why some of that's trucks. in there. If, if we don't require it for a restaurant owner, why do we require it for a food truck? Um, that's a good question. Yeah. I, I, it, it's, but it's more, uh, there's, a, there's a longer story here. Uh, there there okay. are uh, enough occasions in this state and any state of the, of the country where uh, people in these mobile trucks uh, who can appear and then disappear, uh, it, uh, had created enough anxiety Makes over sense, the years yeah. that it was licensed. Ice yeah, cream truck drivers. Yeah. yeah, right. Trafficking. Trafficking yep. comes to mind. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. Any other comments or questions? Thanks. All right. Keep the ice cream truck music is what I heard. Well, and uh, yes. Uh, are there any songs you don't want to hear? <laughs> 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 we'll, uh, we'll come back with uh, some specific ordinance. Uh, provisions. I'm sorry, there's, so any uh, like comparison to other cities around the area and what their licensing requirements are or costs are? Uh, just I think we were a little more laddered than some, yeah. uh, but we're going a little bit further than just okay. stripping that away. I, I, you know, we're, we're on the brink of having, you know, this time next year we've had the experience of, uh, of a completed streetscape and some, uh, so hopefully a very wonderful fall when everything's nice and tidy and, and done and uh, uh, of these and other types of, uh, of uh, venues and uh, uh, we'll know a little bit better, I think, next okay. year at this time. Awesome. All right. Moving on to, make sure, yeah, agenda item K, resolutions. So resolution number one, it's 2022-035, authorizing an access and remediation agreement with Night Court Gas and Commonwealth Edison. Can I have a motion to bring this to the floor? So moved. Second. Moved by Alderman Smith, seconded by Alderman Vervik, uh, city manager. Uh, thank you. And uh, in the audience tonight is, uh, is at least one, several members from, uh, Night Court Gas, uh, who are here to answer any questions. Uh, going back, and also uh, uh, Nick Escobar from ComEd. Uh, going back many years, uh, there was a gas plant that was uh, quite active in, in the uh, middle of the, early to middle part of the 20th century, and uh, that the fuel that was produced there, uh, I, I don't know uh, this level of detail, whether it was, was uh, also transported to other locations, but for us, uh, it provided uh, in a lot of parts of this community uh, gas that was used for lighting and heating and cooking and so forth. And then alternatives sprang up. Uh, the the area where it was produced uh, had some, uh, were, I don't know that leakage is the right word, but there there was some transmission of, of material that uh, uh, needs to be uh, remediated and uh, it just happens that some of that is underneath our property and wouldn't you know it's underneath our, our uh, salt shed and in the vicinity of where we have the de-icing liquid uh, plant. And so uh, we've worked out an agreement and I'm happy to say this, this is a collaborative effort and part of the two utilities involved and us to fix the problem and meet the IEPA requirements and uh, that the city will be made whole for uh, any expense involved in with the re dismantling, removing basically the salt shed building, another one, and so that the area can be uh, excavated and, and remediated. So uh, we need a, a government and uh, private agreement here, and that's what this is about. Council? All right. Um, I, since you showed up tonight, you don't have to, but if there's any comments you want to make, you can, but seems cut and dry. All right. Wonderful. Roll call, please. McAdams? Yes. Verbeck? Yes. Favor? Yes. Morris? Yes. Larson? Yes. Smith? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Mayor Barnes? Yes. Need I? Awesome. Uh, resolution 
sorry, got lost here. 2022-035 passes. Um, you're more than welcome to leave unless you want to stay for the rest of the meeting. But thanks so much for coming out just in case we had any Thank questions. You. Really appreciate it all. Thank you. Have a great night. All right, so moving on to number two, a resolution 2022-036 authorizing the purchase of structural firefighting gear from Air One Equipment Incorporated in an amount not to exceed $40,366. Can I have a motion? So, so moved. Second. Moved by Alderman Morris, seconded by Alderman McAdams, city manager. Uh, thank you. We have, uh, of course, the need to outfit our, our newest firefighters uh, on hand. We had uh, the, the variety of helmets and gloves and hoods and boots and so forth, but uh, to meet uh, NFPA requirements, we have to have what's called structural gear, which is the, the, the jacket and the, and the pants for firefighting. And uh, over the years, we've had uh, maybe a, a person replace another person and so forth, and if they were about the same height and girth, uh, it worked out. Uh, but uh, oftentimes, even when the, the fit was there, the, the the quality of the material was was uh, uh, was aged, let's say, and it wasn't working out so well in terms of meeting the the uh, requirements for heat resistance. And uh, so, in this case, we didn't have any of that working for us. And uh, for the uh, we had ten newly hired firefighters back in 21 and 22, getting by at this point. But we need to get them gear, and uh, also there. We found out that we've got it. There actually is a, a shelf life for these, so uh, another four are going to expire this year. So uh, I asked uh, our new chief to go out and uh, test the water and uh, request uh, pricing. And so we got a good price. Uh, this is not like going to get a, a business suit, it's a little more elaborate than that. So for these 14, uh, it's $40,366. We have a place to pay for the GMT fund, and uh, we recommend your approval. Council? Roll call. Verbeck? Yes. Favor? Yes. Morris? Yes. Larson? Yes. Smith? Yes. Perkins? Yes. McAdams? Yes. Mayor Barnes? Yes. Adai? Resolution 2022-036 passes. All right, moving on to agenda item L, ordinances second reading, we have none. And then agenda item M, ordinances first reading. Number one, ordinance 2022-017, amending chapter seven, water service, section 7.18, water rates, and section 7.18-6, water service fee. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Moved by Alderman Verbeck, seconded by Alderman Favor, uh, city manager. People get that bill every two months and look at it and it's water, it's up or down. And there's actually several components to it, which you're well aware of, but uh, I played it out a little bit for the general public. Uh, and the user rate is, is uh, obvious enough. Uh, there's a water service fee that's tied to the size of the meter, and, and this is one way we can get a little bit of extra money to help with the, the um, capital costs that go into maintaining the system as we have it, delivering fresh water to, to everyone and also for fire protection. So combination of those, we, we decided a, a year or so ago that uh, we uh, ought to tie the, the, any annual increases to the uh, CPI, the Consumer Price Index. And uh, as you know, that's kind of gone through the roof here in recent months. It's uh, the most recent uh, check that we did, it was a February, I don't know that the March is out yet, but um, February uh, increase was, or the CPI was at 7.1 percent, was significant since about the two and a half percent this time last year. And uh, if we didn't bring this to you, which now is required in the, in the city code, we recommended that uh, not quite a year ago, then uh, people would be looking at a very healthy increase. Has, have our costs gone up 7.1 percent? No, our costs have gone up. Just the uh, power costs uh, that help us with our pumping and so forth, that, that cost has gone up and, and there are other costs that go up, labor costs and so forth in the, in the last nine to 10 months in particular, but not 7.1 percent. So Brian Faber, who's uh, Assistant Director of Public Works for Utilities and I have had um, a, a running conversation over the last couple of uh, weeks and 
uh, we, uh, we're recommending something a little bit different, basically half of what the CPI says now. Uh, that's also a little bit closer to what we had. We had a multiple year rate increase, as you know, back four, five, four, and three years ago uh, to bring us, to give us a basis for some capital improvements uh, and repair work, as well as to keep pace with our, our operating costs. And after looking at where we are, and, and you know, it's not a hard science uh, trying to calculate what our true uh, in inflationary impact has been in the last nine to ten months, but we feel that uh, a rate increase is, is uh, uh, justifiable, and that that increase uh, at approximately half of uh, this, half of the, our CPI at 3.5 percent is fair. It would raise um, for, for an average household, and I don't know how many households in DeKalb are actually average households, but the, the 6,000 gallons is, is a pretty substantial usage for a family. Um, we, we've got a lot of single um, households that uh, don't pay anything close to that, or use close to that. So it goes up about $1.34 a month, so 268 every every new bill. Uh, felt that that was fair, but uh, when calculated over all of our users, it does provide us with enough to kind of keep pace with the rising cost of capital improvements and capital maintenance. Council? Alderwoman Larson? I just had a question, um, and it's more just about residents having a little more control over their bills. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason why we have the water meter rate and then the water usage rate? Because then to me, half my bill is, sorry honey, you're stuck with that. Mm -hmm. And I can only adjust half of it. Mm -hmm. My thought is if I could put all of the costs, the, the, the rise that we're, we're talking about, the increase, on the water usage, then as a as a homeowner, I could say, not watering that lawn this year, or I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to be watching the kids in the shower. I could have some more control over it than by putting it on half the bill that the, the size of my meter determines it. It's a fair question. It's, uh, there are some uh, agencies that probably just have, they don't break it out. The problem then is when somebody asks them, well, how much of, the, of my uh, fee every two months or whatever goes into uh, fire protection, capital improvements? You keep talking about that. And people say, oh, uh, about two thirds or whatever they come up with. And there's no scientific way. To, so years ago, and preceding me, it was, it was determined that it was useful as a way of explaining how the money is used to break it into two pieces, because those are, those are the essential two pieces. Now, I'm not saying that's the best way or the only way, but a lot of agencies do that now, because people, uh, because it's a lot more expensive to uh, paint water towers and uh, uh, replace uh, mains like we're doing in 13th and 14th and all the rest of that. It requires some set aside of capital uh, every year, and the council has identified some portion of that overall bill that they said, that's. That's your service fee. Mm -hmm. That's what goes into that. And then the user fee that you know that just keeps the operating system solvent. We're not aiming. We're aiming to have a little bit of a cushion and a balance there, obviously. But we're not looking to. Um, we don't expand our capital system necessarily with that money. You could go into the the water user side, and uh, in an emergency. Uh, I don't, I don't even want to think about what, yeah. what it would be. Some, something catastrophic to pull money over onto the capital side, but that's not something we typically do. I don't know if that answered your question. You could do it the other way, but then you don't have a way of explaining uh, how we've broken it out. And as you look at you know, our budget, we, we have some detailed charts there. You don't know how we got to those numbers. Mm -hmm. okay. Alderman Perkins. So you mentioned the budget. So this 3% this number is going to be more closely aligned with the way it was budgeted as well, right? Because <clears throat> if memory serves in the budget, we assumed a certain yes. rate of increase Correct. for revenue and similarly for costs. Correct. 
And if memory serves, I thought this 3% number was in that ballpark. That's just, I think, half a percent above it. Okay. Thank you. Alderman McAdams. I do want to uh, speak up about uh, the consumer <clears throat> side of the things and realizing that consumers are really pinched at this time mm -hmm. with inflationary pressures on pretty much everything. And I, when I first read this, I literally was no water increase, um, or maybe the 2.6. And that's where I'm leaning uh, with my vote and with my heart. Um, I've reached out to the ward and I've asked for their input and they've been very responsible about balancing needs versus their own costs. But I think it's, it's one of the things the city can offer to the, to the residents is a break, which uh, I think everyone can appreciate. Um, once in a while we catch a break. And so I'm, I'm pretty much leaning towards no water rate increase this one year. Um, the CPI is a wonderful tool when everything is balanced, but uh, I think things are not balanced at this time. And so I think that's uh, one of those situations where we can use our discretion and speak up for the consumers and give them a one, one year off of rate increases, and then we'll go back to, um, but hopefully things will, will simmer down. All in favor? I would, I'll agree with my fellow aldermen uh, McAdams about the, the CPI. I, I was like, well, that, that is what it is, so we should charge that. However, I do feel it is, the 7.1 is, I think this is a moment in time. I don't think this is, this is the world going forward. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the cut in rate to 3.5%, which is probably more close to an average CPI, you know, a, a multi-year, two and a half to three and a half is probably it's it's in that band. So I, I'm in agreement with three and a half, and I think that was a, a good decision a, a, for this point in time. Alderman Burbick, and I really appreciate the review uh, rather than just letting it be. So uh, I would also support uh, three and a half percent. But again, like this review, I would like us to be able to review this whether that's annually or whatever the case may be, and be flexible uh, to Alderman McAdams' point to uh, the needs of our community. Alderman Morris. So uh, Alderman McAdams, I just want to clarify what you're saying. Are you saying that you're in favor of the 2.6 like last year or the zero? So my first choice would be no water increase, and then I would be willing to come up to the 2.6 as last year. Uh, because my ward has uh, has talked about um, lead uh, lead pipe removal and the importance of that, and I know that we're short on our projected numbers for that. Um, it was we have um, <coughs> operations plus a million set aside, and the estimate was that it would be operations plus two or three million. So there's a, a realistic viewpoint that we have to address that issue, and we can't kick that can down the the street, but this is one of the, like Alderman uh, Favor says, it's a moment in time. And I think that the CPI is particularly cruel at this moment, uh, be, just because it's been an unusually rough year. I read um, discretionary income, uh, they calculated that there's $15 trillion of discretionary income in the country. It's 6% of, consumer, of, the, of consumers' money, but I don't think that $15 trillion is in the wallets of the residents of the city of DeKalb. And so I think that that's just one of those situations where, yes, there's a lot of money in the economy. Yes, there's plenty of money out there, but it's not our money. And uh, asking our residents to, in, to a 7.1 increase would be unconscionable at this point to me, uh, just because it just seems wildly unfair with the cost of everything else going on. Look, Alderman Smith, I didn't know if you had a follow-up question. Go ahead, Alderman Smith. Uh, we're pulling lead service replacement from this fund, right? I think the sooner, I mean, I know Brian's guys have been out and because there's been some, a lot of phone calls, hang tags, I think, and so I think he's getting some responses. I just don't want us to get caught in, in a position where we have to levy higher mm -hmm. to meet the deadline for lead service. I mean, that mm -hmm. lead, lead in their water lines is just, I mean, we all know what it can do. And I think the citizens, we owe it to them uh, to replace those as quickly as we can. And I think this helps offset, is where I'm going, this helps offset those costs if we run short. Uh, Am I wrong? <laughs> uh, no, uh, it could. Uh, and I should, I should say this, and I 
I should have said earlier in my remarks. So we learned something since we had that conversation about lead service lines. Remember we had that and then there was some good coverage in the local media. Uh, and we were talking about uh, saving a little something for the, the skin that the homeowner could put in the game. Well, uh, the EPA corrected us on that. Also I have been doing that around the region. What they've said is if you put any money public money into that service, and the service starts at the main, right? So we were talking 100% on the public side, but if you put any public money into it, you own it in terms of lead, re lead service replacement. So now we have to go all the way to the house. So that's a little extra that we hadn't thought, more than a little extra that we hadn't thought about. So uh, we don't, we have a period of time to get this done. There may be IEPA monies down the way, uh, but we can't count on what we don't see and it hasn't been awarded to us. So um, another reason was we could, you know, that, that service fee money that we were talking about, some of that uh, at, it's not a big difference between the 2.6 and 3.5, but that gives us a little cushion for that. Uh, the other thing is uh, if we, like say we were to do none, uh, no increase, uh, then next year we'd have a more difficult conversation. It's always a balancing act where, uh, well, now we have to make up, let's say next year's uh, CPI is 4.3 or 3.8 or something. So now we're making up for the previous year and then that year. So how do you, so I, um, we also talk uh, at the staff level, 2.6, 3.5. I think that's the sweet spot somewhere in there and it's your call. Alderman Morris? I, I'm in favor of the 3.5 level, um, recognizing that I think we have some big expenses and some big infrastructure repairs that are long overdue that desperately need to be done. Um, my water bill is super high <laughs> and it's hard, uh, but, but I think it's important to make sure that we're increasing at the appropriate rate so that next year it's not a giant increase, um, just as the city manager said. All right, and hearing none, uh, oh, Alderman Smith. Uh, Bill, I think we're, Emory, we're ahead of the game on our lead service, Some from other communities probably on this list, yes. right? So they, the dollars have to come somewhere. So I, I'm going to go on that and realize that a lot of these communities we've used, for example, are going to see increases once they realize they extend their own lead service. Mm -hmm. Yes, our, our increase shows here, but th they haven't acted if they're going to act this year on theirs yet, so, yeah. Thank you. So I'm going to clarify the motion before the floor is going to be for a 3.5% increase, um, and that's what I'm going to ask for a roll call on. So roll call recording, Secretary Scott. Favor? Yes. Morris? Yes. Larson? Yes. Smith? Yes. Perkins? Yes. McAdams? No. Verbeck? Yes. Mayor Barnes? Yes. 7 I. All right, so ordinance 2022-017 passes on first reading. Should we move for a waiving second or do we want to hold this over for the next council meeting? Hold it over, I would. Hold it over? That sounds good to me. All right, so is that? Works in the timeline, right, City Manager? Yes. Wonderful. All right. Moving on to agenda item N, reports and communications. Uh, how about Alderman McAdams? You want to kick us off? Sure. Um, I attended today's uh, Citizens um, Community Enhancement Commission. Thank you. Community <laughs> Enhancement Commission. And um, we, sp we spoke about the ways to spend the $50,000 that T-Mobile has so generously granted to the city. And something that's coming up that we can talk about is utility box murals. There's three city-owned downtown utility boxes at Van Buer Plaza, Palmer Court, and behind City Hall. And uh, we want to accept applications for local artists to come out and paint those utility boxes. There'll be money for, um, to compensate the artists for their, uh, their materials. And um, anyone that is interested in any other art projects is encouraged to come before the commission to discuss their ideas because now is the time. We are definitely pushing in the area of public art and we are definitely interested in local artists 
and what they have to provide. So if anyone has an idea, if anyone's friends with an artist, knows an artist, anybody at NIU, now definitely come forward with your idea. This is the time to discuss it. The commission is more than happy to review and um, they're anxious to approve projects. So let's get it underway. Awesome. All them in favor? Uh, next week, Monday night at 6 p.m. at the police station in the training room will be a Ward 7 uh, meeting. We'll talk about parking issues in the Lauren Hedge subdivision area, um, traffic issues that have been reported in Devonair Farms. And then I've also, um, we can also talk about the uh, De DeKalb Community Gardens uh, Food Hub, which is their announcement last week, puts it into uh, Ward 7 territory as well. So. Uh, come on out and uh, hope to have a good discussion. Thanks. Alderman Verbeck. A warm Ward 6 welcome to Save Marketplace Marathon on 125 North Annie Glidden and La Salsa, who has just relocated from the Hillcrest Shopping Center to the Village Commons Bookstore Center on Lucinda. Great having them in our business district. Additionally, uh, also a ward meeting for Ward 6 is this Wednesday. Look forward to everybody coming out. Awesome. Alderman Perkins. I'm, a, <clears throat> I'm planning a ward, meet, ward 4 meeting in mid-May, so if you have any ideas or agenda topics, please send them to me. Alderman Larson. I want to just say how excited I am that we don't have an acting chief anymore. <laughs> we always had a chief, so this is, this is fabulous that it's official now. I'm so excited about that. And just thanks again to um, Streets. I had to do a call on Sunday with a tree that was half down and hanging. And Andy's guys came out, and in an hour it was cleaned up. So thanks again for taking care of all of us. Alderman Morse. I have not scheduled a, everybody's got meetings, so it's time to have meetings. Clearly it's the season. Um, but please let me know if you have topics that you'd like to hear addressed at an upcoming ward meeting. Um, I haven't scheduled it yet, but I'm thinking after theirs are done. <laughs> and, and city attorney, quick question on this too. If a council person is having a ward meeting and others come to attend, from an OMA perspective, is it still majority quorum and that's it, or? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So All you right. would ideally have less than a majority of the quorum. So if any of you are thinking of attending each other's ward meetings, be sure and communicate that so we can make sure that we're not in violation of OMA. Uh, Alderman Smith. Ready? I'm ready. Uh, <laughs> Mike, congratulations. Uh, known you a long time, so well deserved, sir. Um, a special shout out to Zach Gill, uh, North 13th and 14th. Right now it looks like a battlefield, especially 13th, but we are making very good progress. Um, Zach's on top of that. You know, quite a bit. Um, actually, I am looking at a ward meeting, third ward, um, but it won't be till July. I'm going to wait till everybody's done, <laughs> and the city staff can have you know sit back a little bit. Um, also, what uh, Alderman McAdams was talking about the paint the plug. I think I've seen that coming out. I don't know how the responses are on that. Um, I get a kick out of looking at what some of the creativity on some of our fire hydrants. Um, so I would really give that a plug. That's it, sir. Awesome. Uh, for me, just be real quick, I uh, definitely want to thank Zach Gill and uh, many members of the city of Cal coming out for NIU Snowflake event where they were trying to create the world's largest snowflake and be entered into the Guinness Book of World Records. That happened out of the Convocation Center. I think it was a seven, eight hour uh, process. Um, and there were a lot of community volunteers. So that was really cool to see the city uh, participating in that. I uh, also wanted to give thanks to NIU. They have included uh, city staff, uh, well, City Manager Nicholas, um, Chief Bird, and then myself in the interview process for the new Vice President of Student Affairs. Um, that's a key role at the university that uh, we will be interfacing with on a regular basis, and it was nice that we have a voice in that as well. Um, uh, oh, I'll second the Citizens Community Enhancement Commission. Uh, this is a call for art. So if all those out there listening to this, if you know someone, have an idea, um, please reach out to the Enhancement Commission and uh, they are accepting your ideas and this is the time for us to really start bringing some beautiful art uh, to our community that everyone can enjoy, not just the residents but people that visit our community as well. And the last thing, yeah, congrats Chief. 
uh, known you and your family a long time, um, and to see a DeKalb guy who raised his family here and has dedicated so much to the fire department be promoted to that role uh, is just absolutely phenomenal. So well deserved, sir, and looking forward to working with you over the years. And with that, city manager report. Uh, just very briefly, I want to thank uh, members of the council and the mayor for your continuing support for our staff. Uh, I, I know uh, day to day um, the kind of work that the people here tonight and people who couldn't be here tonight are, are putting in. And um, so I thank you for this, for your support. Uh, I want to particularly thank uh, Council Member Larson for f also feeding us <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, and doing that well. So that, that's very gracious and, and, and um, very caring. Uh, finally, uh, just want to say that Zach uh, Gill is, he's been mentioned here a couple times uh, very uh, respectfully and, and certainly uh, has deserved that. He's uh, in the middle of some very significant uh, infrastructure projects right now, but um, in anticipation of a couple of the ward meetings, uh, particularly uh, the f fourth ward and the first ward, uh, is working on some designs. I won't say that he's got them in his pocket right now, <laughs> but uh, both the first and, and well, all wards have, have issues with speeding right now, but uh, particularly on some uh, larger a small, I guess they would be called minor arterials uh, or major collectors, at, at least uh, thinking about Ridge, thinking about Fairview, uh, and uh, there, there are some traffic calming uh, things that he's working on, and, I th and they sound promising, so I'll just leave it at that. We'll present them to you at, at the appropriate time. Awesome. All right, moving on to agenda item O, executive session. We have none, so agenda item P, adjournment. I take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved by Alderman Favor, seconded by Alderman Perkins. All in favor say aye. 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 Nay, same sign. We are adjourned.